as expected, this series has resembled a championship fight. Both heavyweight division leaders have traded punches in the first two games, each with a decisive win. As they continue to battle for the American League's best record, your Rangers and the Cleveland Indians are ready to rumble. Round three is next on Fox Sports Southwest. It is an absolutely perfect night here at Globe Live Park. Large crowd filing in, better than 40,000 will be on hand to see your Rangers take on the Cleveland Indians. And welcome in everyone, along with Tom Grieve, Steve Busby, glad to join us. We captured this stormtrooper just before the ball game. We're gonna pump him for some answers, see where that Death Star is, because the Rangers need to know what the details are. They're gonna get after it a little bit later on. But now, uh, the Jedi leading the uh, rebel cause, Adrian Beltre, and he's been good. That's pretty good, Buzz. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the Rangers are really searching for their offense to mesh. But the one guy that's really been hot has been Adrian Beltre. What's new? This time last year, he was carrying the team, and he's doing it again right now. In the last seven games, he's hit 360. Four home runs in his last seven games, seven home runs in August. You have a pretty good feeling that Adrian is going to continue this. What he needs is several of the other guys to get hot and join him and make that offense mesh. Now, there's no doubt that he has had the force with him this whole time. It will continue tonight. No Omar Mazzara will be leading things off again for your Rangers as they tackle the Cleveland Indians. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by High Speed Internet from AT&T. Ford Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer during the final days of the Ford Freedom Sales Event and see why Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T High Speed Internet. Get a deal worth talking about. Get high speed internet from AT&T. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Well, an absolutely perfect night here. Temperature at 90 degrees, very light breeze, low humidity. Well, the Rangers uh, 
trying to get on top in this series. It's tied at one game apiece right now before we get tonight's game underway. Let's check in with Emily Jones. Well, that's A.J. Griffin taking the mound for the Rangers tonight. He continues to work his way back into form physically since coming off the DL. He says his goals are relatively simple from start to start. Keep my body the way the way I want it to be, and uh, just to uh, to stay on top of my arm care and everything, to be feeling good, and just you know go out there with a positive attitude and continue to execute pitches and, uh, and get things up. And one thing Jeff Bannister talked about before today's game was the fact that AJ Griffin has been so effective the first two times through an order. So he said that maybe that might lend itself to tonight if this team can jump out to an early lead, AJ can give them five or six strong, go two times through the order then hand it over to the bull, bullpen. That might be an ideal situation given the way the last few starts have gone for AJ for this team to go in tonight, Buzz. All right, Emily, thank you. We'll keep an eye on that plan, see how it uh, works out tonight. Well, AJ facing the Cleveland Indians for the first time in uh, three years. Tom's going to tell you about the lineup that he will face tonight. Well, Carlos Santana with first base power is the leadoff hitter, 27 home runs. That ties his career high. Jason Kipnis, two-time All-Stars at second. Francisco Lindor, bright young shortstop for Cleveland, is batting third. Mike Napoli is the DH. Jose Ramirez, who's hot right now, is playing third base. Lonnie Chisinau is in left. Abraham Almonte, coming off a nice game last night, is playing right field. Tyler Naquin, the rookie center fielder, is batting eighth. And batting ninth is the catcher with four hits in last night's game. Buzz's average went from 104 <laughs> to 146. That's Roberto Perez. He had quite a night last night. A.J. Griffin charged tonight with uh, keeping him at bay, keeping that whole uh, Indian lineup at bay. A.J., the 28-year-old, making his 18th start of the year. He is 5-3 and three with a 468 ERA, and the opponent's hitting 253 against him. But he's been on a little bit of a negative roll. Took the loss last time out against Tampa Bay, although he only gave up three runs in five and two-thirds. That was a uh, an 8-2 to two Ranger loss down at uh, the drop. As we mentioned, the first time in three years that he's uh, faced the Cleveland Indians. And uh, A.J. Griffin's first pitch to Carlos Santana is in for strike one. So we are underway at seven minutes past seven Central Daylight Time. There's that slow hook, and that finds the top of the strike zone. 89 degrees at first pitch tonight. Carlos Santana, a 248 hitter, and he pounds a two hopper down to Mitch Moreland. Who will take it to the bag himself for out number one? Oh, good start for A.J. Griffin. Three pitches in. He has the first out. Take a look at the Ranger defense. It's delivered to you tonight by the Texas Department of Transportation. Carlos Gomez, Ian Desmond, and Nomar Mazzaro, left, center, and right. You saw Moreland at first. He's joined by Ruth Neto Dor on the right side of the infield. Elvis Andrus, Adrian Beltre on the left side. And Robinson Chirinos gets the start here this evening. Oh, one up, one away. Jason Kiptis, the second baseman, steps to the plate. Kiptis hitting it 285. And so far for A.J. Griffin, nothing but strikes. Kiptis, 20 home runs, 68 driven in. On base percentage, better than uh, 340. Well, A.J., pretty pinpoint. Kiptis turning back to uh, home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg. Is it, say, are you serious? Said, yeah, I'm serious. Strikes. Check the scoreboard out, kid. <laughs> Got him swinging. Big slow hook. And the out will be recorded at first. And A.J. Griffin. Very, very economical with uh, six pitches and two outs here in the first. Batting third, shortstop, number 12, Francisco Lindor. That curveball is very effective when you're ahead in the count. One and two, 0 oh and two. Don't have to throw it for a strike. Which AJ did not throw that for a strike, but he got Kipnis to swing at it anyway. Now here's Francisco Lindor, the young shortstop. And he hammers this to right field. Mazar is going back. He pulls up, and that ball is off the top of the wall and caroms away from it. Lindor around to third. He will be in standing with a two out triple. He couldn't have missed by much more than a foot of hitting it into the bullpen. That yeah, with two outs, you just hope and stay in the ballpark. Fortunately, hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark out there in right, deepest part of right field anyway. 
And it did stay in the park. So with two outs, you still have a chance to get out of the inning. Nobody on base. Off the bat, it looked like it might have home run distance. Lindor's hit 14 home runs this year. But it fortunately hitting that little corner right there instead of to the left where it's only 377. Oh, a two out triple. Now Mike Napoli, the DH tonight. And he goes after the first pitch and skies to center field. Right there is Desmond. But that will do it. Well, the two out, the Lindor triple, no problem for A.J. Griffin. Indians gone after a half inning. It's the Indians nothing. The Rangers coming up on Fox Sports Southwest. Well, Norman Mazar is back in the leadoff spot. Ian Desmond follows him in center field. Carlos Beltran bats third. Adrian Beltre is 10th in the league now with 84 runs batted in, four home runs in his last seven ball games. Rubnet is batting fifth. Carlos Gomez moves up to sixth spot in the lineup in left field. Mitch Moreland is seventh. Elvis is the shortstop batting eighth. And getting the start behind the plate tonight is Robinson Chirinos. That lineup facing the 29 year old right hander Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco from Barquisimeto in uh, Venezuela. Omar Mazzara not wasting any time as he fouls off that first pitch. Carrasco, like most of the Indian pitchers, has been on a pretty good roll. Fastball changeup, hard curveball, and he uh, probably has as good a stuff as anybody, uh, certainly on the Indian staff, maybe in uh, all of the American League. Uh, major hitters really can't afford to. Expand the strike zone down because he likes to live right at the bottom of that strike zone. And he has a good sinking fastball, a very hard changeup that'll drop out of sight. You start swinging at that pitch down below the knees, it's going to be a short night for you. One ball and one strike to count. Here's that the Go power changeup. That's a good one, yeah. too. Fastball is mid 90s, 95, 96. I guess that's like a King Felix changeup, 91 miles an exactly. hour. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It reminds you yeah. when you watch it of that. Two and one. That's out of play to the left. Now the umpiring crew tonight mentioned that uh, Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, is calling the balls and strikes. John Tempain at first, Brian Onora at second, Lance Barrett down the line at third. Oh, two and two. To Nomar Mazzara. Mazzara at 282 had a couple of hits last night. This is a third ever start in that leadoff spot. He has 15 home runs and has driven in 49. A little bit low. Three and two. Nice job by Nomar to lay off a couple of tough pitches. Mazzara trying to get aboard to start off this first inning. Ian Desmond, the Rangers center fielder, is next. Rangers come in at uh, 21 games over 500. They are 75 and 54. 
They are 40 and 21 here at Globe Live Park this year. It's the best home record, or third best home record, I should say, in all of baseball. Second best to Baltimore in the American League. Baltimore at uh, 40 and 20. They're 41 and 20, excuse me. Now Carrasco ready. And the 3-2 pitch. Chop slowly foul down the first base side. That's exactly what you want for your leadoff hitter. See seven or eight pitches. Hopefully get on base. It'd be even better. He's been able to lay off that changeup that I'm sure a lot of people have swung at. Carrasco this year strikes out a batter per inning. Last couple of years it's well over a batter per inning. So he's a big time strikeout guy. And he gets probably a pretty good percentage of them on that changeup out of the strike zone. Saw the Rangers skipper, Jeff Bannister, and Kevin Harmon, the head trainer. Another 3 2. That slap just foul outside the bag at third. They might have had a double just like the one Kipnis hit yeah. last night off Martin Perez. You got a good idea watching that ball just go by the bag, how far off the line Jose Ramirez, the third baseman, is. There's a good look at it right there. How close was that? Pretty close. No, another 3-2 pitch. This will be the eighth of the at-bat. Got him swinging. Oh, after all that, eight pitches in the strikeout is the result for Carrasco. Yeah, Carrasco got very good control and not afraid to throw that off-speed pitch behind the count. Take a look at the Indians' defense tonight. Chisinau gets to start in left field. Daquin in center. Almonte is in right. And Santana and Kipnis on the right side. Lindor and Ramirez on the left with uh, Roberto Perez again behind home plate tonight, catching his third game in the row. And Desmond takes outside. And you have one correction to make on that. Defense is Chisholm Hall in right and Almonte in left. Okay. I read that wrong myself. Yeah. Ian Desmond, a 288 average. Two balls, no strikes. First opportunity for Ian Desmond to see Carlos Carrasco. You may have seen him in spring training. Uh, during the regular season, this is the first time he has had a look at him. There's a 2-0 pitch, not a fastball. 3-2 pitch to Mazzara was not a fastball. You see why this guy has been one of the tougher guys to hit in the league. Last two years, on opponent's batting average, 209, 228, 222 this year. You can see why he's racking up about a strikeout per, per inning, too. 11 pitches into the game. It's pretty obvious. That is just a little bit outside. Two balls and a strike. Or three balls and a strike. He only walked 30 batters in 124 innings, too. Gary Francona's team. A uh, four and a half game advantage in the Central Division of the American League. They're on top of the uh, Tigers by that much. Little looper out of the shallow center. It is by Lindor and Kipnis. And Desmond has a one out single here in the first. They ran it in on his fist. Had to fight it off, and Lindor almost ran underneath that little pop up. Couldn't quite get to it, though. Lindor is very quick at shortstop. Very good defensive player. But for a second, he might be able to dive and catch that little blooper. There's the pitch running in on. Ian's fists, but he muscled it just far enough. Well, that's a great shot of a hitter pulling those hands in, trying to get the barrel of the bat to it. So, Rangers have the uh, first hit of the night for themselves. Desmond aboard with a one out single. Here's Carlos Beltran. He takes ball one. Beltran. Uh, I'm sure most of you know by now, admired in a long over, over 32 at this point. Average for the year now down to 286. That's the combination 
with the Yankees and the Rangers. With the Rangers by itself, he's hitting just 207. Carrasco with a pretty quick move. I have a feeling when Carlos breaks out of this, there are going to be a lot of pitchers that wish they hadn't been around to see it. <laughs> Just a matter of time. Yeah. Two balls, no strikes. Well, so far, Carrasco has not been able to get ahead of any of the three Ranger hitters that he faced. He came back on a 3 2 pitch and got Mazzara. But then uh, Desmond will muscle a 3 1 pitch into center field. We'll see if he throws the 2 0 fastball here to Beltron. He didn't to Ian. You think Carlos was standing in the on deck circle watching that? Probably. <laughs> yeah, he missed high and away. Three balls, no strikes. Now, a philosophical question for you Beltran's 0 for 32. Do you give him the green light here? Sure. I would. Yeah. You know, as a veteran hitter and a discerning hitter, you don't worry about him trying to launch one on a pitch out of the strike zone. So, yeah, I think sometimes that could be just what you need to get out of a slump. Almost assured to get a fastball right here. If you get your pitch, why not? Like he was taken all the way, probably on his own about that. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Well, Beltran hitting third, trying to get aboard to join Desmond. Adrian Beltran, the cleanup hitter. Getting set to face Carrasco. Saw the Indians, uh, the overship that they employ with Carlos Beltran, with Ramirez, the third baseman, shading up the middle as a shortstop. And the shortstop, Lindor, just about where a normal second baseman would be positioned with Kipnis over in the hole. Well, already Carrasco drawing the ire of the Ranger fans out here at Globe Life Park. Three balls, one strike with one on and one out. Chopped the other way. Lindor going to have a tough play. Throws off. Yeah. And it's not <laughs> what a great play, too. He got that ball over there accurately. That was Ramirez, excuse me. Used to seeing Lindor out there. That was uh, Jose Ramirez. That was a beautiful play. Now, Ramirez is such a good athlete. He looked like Lindor going after that play. Nice ball. But very tough to throw anybody out when you've got to go this far to get the ball. But watch the attempt that he makes on the dead run. He throws that ball over there with something on it. That is a great play. You're right, Tom. Remarked about him being a good hitter. That He's just a good ball player. Versatile, can play almost anywhere on the field. And he's a 300 hitter. And as that graphic told you, the first hit in 33 at bats for Carlos Beltran. No, two on with one out. Here's Adrian Beltran. Nothing and one. That pitch the 20th of this first inning for Carlos Carrasco. Beltre, two for nine in previous matchups with Carrasco. Hit his 23rd home run last night. 436th of his career. And that is going to be a ball. Can't do that, boys. Since nobody was at first base other than Carlos Beltran. If you're on the pitching rubber and you bluff a throw to first base, you're done. Got to step off the pitching rubber if you're going to make a throw. He just had a brain cramp, forgot there was nobody holding him on. Yep. Whoops. So, Rangers benefit from the balk. That moves Desmond to third and Beltran to second. Bob Davidson wasn't even in the umpiring quartet. Eh? <laughs> they didn't need Bob Davidson <laughs> to call that one. We could have we could have called that. Well, I could have called that. And I know you know what a balk is, but I could have called that one. You don't see that one very often. No, you don't. You don't. And really, that is that's just lack of concentration. You're thinking about how do I get out of this jam? Yeah. And it's just one of those deals. You you start to come set, and you kind of look over your shoulder, and all of a sudden you see there's 
room between the runner and the bag, and you turn to throw and say, oh, darn, nobody there. Yeah, with Ben on first and second, he's never going to be there. Our GXU Energy power player to watch, Adrian Beltre, home run in each of the last two games. Third time this season that Beltre has had home runs in back-to-back -back contests. You got a chance to get the Rangers out in front here early. A little bit inside. One ball and one strike. We'll take you back to last night in that sixth inning. Adrian Beltre just jumping all over a high fastball from Corey Kluber. 456 feet, the uh, stat cast estimate of that bomb. Now Carrasco ready, checking the runners. Hard hit, pit nicely, and Ramirez going for the tag, he's safe. That's some athletic ability right there. How in the world Ian Desmond got back under the tag, I have no idea. I don't know how he did it either, because Ramirez is an athlete himself. Ian was going to think of thinking about going home if he threw the ball the first right away. And as it is, he got back without Ramirez being able to make the tag. Yeah. There's a pretty good idea right there that he's they're not going to challenge that one. What a play. Bad luck for Adrian because he hit that ball hard. Unfortunately, it was right at Ramirez. Otherwise, might have picked up a couple of runs to smash. Ian tempted him yeah. and got back. He couldn't have waited one more tenth of a second or he would have been out. He threw that line out there and Ramirez took the bait. He did. So it goes down as a fielder's choice to allow Beltre to reach first. Bases loaded with one out for Rugnet Odor. You remember last night the Rangers had a couple of chances early in that game to get to Corey Kluber and let him slide by. We'll see if they can uh, not let the same thing happen in the first inning here tonight. Rugnet Odor, a 273 average, the team leader with 24 home runs. Sixty three RBI for the Rangers second baseman. Last night Odor had a one for three game. Infield playing back at double play depth. Nothing and one. Odor has had only one at bat against uh, Carlos Carrasco. Failed to get a hit in that at bat. Six game hitting streak for Odor. Had exactly one hit in all six of those ball games. But two of them have left the ballpark. He's got the bases full of Ranger teammates here with one out in the first. Now down to the count, nothing in two. There's that changeup. That is a weapon, boy. Kind of a hush falling over the crowd here as they're anticipating erupting if the Rangers are able to score. No balls, two strikes. Down to first, it's off the shoulder of Santana. Everybody's safe, and to score in Desmond. And the crowd gets a chance to jump and applaud. One nothing, Rangers. Well, Rangers had a couple of breaks this inning. Desmond hit a little blooper to center. Beltran, a little dribbler to shortstop. And now Ruby hit what looked like a fairly easy play. Let's see what happened. Just takes a big hop and ate him up. Didn't look like that tough of a play. He turned it into a tough play, though. Well, look, at the last bounce might have gone yeah. a little farther to the right than he anticipated. Yeah, I think you're right. Still waiting for uh, Will Rudd as the official scorer to make a determination on that. But yeah, that was a pretty tough 
hop that uh, came up and also went to his right, as you were talking about, Tom. Yeah, you can see his glove is kind of on his left shoulder where he's going to anticipate the ball. And then watch the last bounce that the ball takes when it hits right here. It goes the other way to his right shoulder. So it was an easy play, but the hop might have turned it into a base hit. We'll see how they score it. Now it's going to score an error okay. on Santana. He does get an RBI, though, so the Rangers on top, one nothing. Still nobody out. Base is full for Carlos Gomez. Gomez moving up a spot in the lineup tonight. He's batting sixth. Pitch to uh, Gomez. Out of play. One out here with the bases full in the first inning. For the year, Carlos Gomez, a 208 hitter. He has one of those six home runs in a Ranger uniform in his first Ranger at bat. Three run blast here on Thursday night. Chance to do some damage here in the first inning. Nothing and two. Sinking fastball, 93 miles an hour. Great location with it, too. They had Ruggie 0 and 2, and Ruggie put the ball in play, and something good happened. Let's see if Carlos can do that. Now the right hander checking the runners. Got him swinging. Nasty breaking ball. Gomez down on strikes. There are two gone now, and Mitch Moreland coming and in. So no, both outs have come via the strikeout for Carrasco here in the first. Moreland, a 252 average, 21 home runs, 51 RBI. And Mitch has had pretty good success against Carrasco. That bottom line there, I'll tell you, three for nine with a home run against the Indian right-hander. Beltran, the runner at third. Beltre at second. Rupnet Odor at first. Belted to right field. If it's fair. what you want to do against a good pitcher is when you get a chance that was his 27th 28th pitch of the inning you got a chance to put big number on the board go for it Mitch got a pitch to hit see the replay of it might have been a high changeup. yeah I think you're right because he really got out in front yeah, of it he did unless he was just banking on that was yeah. going to be a fastball yeah but I, I thought I, I agree with you so how about that? Mitch Moreland is second career grand slam. Rangers on top with a five spot in the first inning. Yeah, that's a changeup. Yep. Right down the middle of the plate. You know, when it's the first pitch you've seen and it's around 90 miles an hour, there was no element of surprise no. right there on that swing. Now Elvis drives one to center field. This one playable though. Tom and Naquin back there. And that'll do it. But Rangers come up with a crooked number in the first. Five runs on three hits, an error, and nobody left. Mitch Borland with a grand salami gets the Rangers going. After one, 5 nothing Texas.
His second career Grand Slam is 22nd home run of the year. Propelling the Rangers through that five run first inning. And now A.J. Griffin back out to work with that lead. And he pumps in strike one to Jose Ramirez. Now A.J. has thrown nine pitches in this ball game. They have all been strikes and he finally missed with one. As soon as I said that, <laughs> I tried to take it back and I didn't do it in time. Ramirez, 306 hitter. Two and one the count. Ramirez, of course, the switch hitter. Almost equal from both sides of the plate, right around 305, 306. Either side. To short, Elvis, a jump throw. Can he get there in time? No. Ramirez gets down that line pretty well. And Elvis did everything he possibly could, but just couldn't get enough steam on the throw. That was a nice play by Elvis and nice pick by Mitch. Different runner, different result. At eight, six, the right field for number eight, Monty Chisinau. No, the infield single has Ramirez aboard to start the second inning. That is the second. Cleveland hit against A.J. Griffin. Lonnie Chisenhall. And a foul ball, hit a foul ball off of his uh, right leg on uh, Thursday night. Came out of the ball game in the sixth inning. Hammers this one foul, well foul back into the club level. Chisenhall uh, did not play last night because of the soreness lingering in that leg, but he's back in there to start tonight. One for four in previous matchups with A.J. Griffin. And he pops one up into center field. He and Desmond moving in underneath it. That is out number one. And before Abraham Almonte comes out, let's say hello to Jim Knox. All right, Buzz, great crowd here tonight. And how about Tim celebrating his 50th birthday with 30 of his closest friends in from Frisco. What a way to celebrate a birthday, huh, Tim? Absolutely, this is great. All right, go well, you guys have fun. That's right, go Rangers. And look who's here, oh my goodness. Tom, we always see him on the post game. Go, Glenn, I didn't know you sit out here. I'm sure you got plenty to say, buddy. Guys! There we go, Glenn, all right, way to go, buddy. <laughs> Noxie, you got to cut him off the sugar right now. <laughs> Let him calm down a little bit. My goodness. <laughs> First pitch to Almonte is in for strike one. Abraham Almonte a big night last night. As a matter of fact, most of the Indian hitters had big nights last night. Almonte a couple of doubles in his three hit evening. One ball and one strike. Monte with now 13 runs driven in. Went uh, three for five with four RBI last night. A ball and two strikes. Did you happen to see the, speaking of big nights, the box score for the Royals and the Red Sox yesterday? No, I didn't. Red Sox got beat six to three. They had 15 hits. They had Pedroia, I think, went four for four. Mookie Betts went five for five, and someone else had three hits, oh, and they only cow. scored three runs. Well, they used them all up in those three spots. Yeah. To left field, Carlos Gomez gets there in time to put that away for out number two. That's not easy to do. Get no. Three runs on 15 hits. 15 hits. hits. That'd be a good race for the MVP in the American League. Yeah. You got a number of guys that are having yeah. great years. They sure do. And the, and the teams are playing well, too. Yeah, that's, their teams are right there. Yeah. Sometimes that's kind of uh, made the exception of a guy that really had maybe MVP numbers, but the team didn't play well. I said, well, you know, they could have they could have lost 85 yeah. with somebody else. Yeah, there's been a couple of times where that's happened, and the teams that have played well, just haven't had one guy stand out. I remember when A-Rod was the MVP. Right. Uh, that was one example of that, but that's not a problem this year with the Houston, Altuve, Mookie Betts with Boston. Heck, Big Poppy, you got to give him a vote sure. even though he's a DH. Sure. Manny Ramirez, just to name a few. One ball and one strike the count to Tyler Naquin. Talking about Naquin before the ball game, the Texas A&M product. 
first round draft pick by the Indians out of AM. One ball and two strikes to it. Aikman, the 15th player picked in the draft that year. Breaking ball inside and hitting. Aikman right. takes that off the leg. That was that 61 mile an hour curveball, and that puts two aboard with two out. I think Naquin's been talking to Geyer. Yeah. Watch it. He doesn't even move that foot. Puts it down. Well, I don't blame him. It's going about 40 miles an hour, and he's got a big pad on his leg anyway, so you might as well stand there. That was one AJ just said, I'm going to really bury this curveball for strike three, and she yanked it into the, un into the other batter's box. No. Two hit by pitches last night, one more tonight. Or three hit by pitches last night. One more tonight. Uh, we're, we're talking about Brandon Geyer. He's been hit by pitches 27 times this year. And if it's inside, he just stands there and yep. lets it hit him. You know, that one hit him in the shin last night that was going pretty fast. 95 mile an hour fastball, <laughs> that was. That's pretty fast. Yeah, it is. A slow curveball is a little bit different story. Well, here's Roberto Perez, who broke out up in a big way last night. He had a four-hit evening. As Tom told you, he had an eight total hits in 77 at-bats coming into play last night. And a career-high four-hit evening. Got his batting average up to uh, near respectability, 146. Going the other way, and Rubdet Odor able to cut it off. Turns and throws, and that'll take care of the Indians. No runs a hit, two men left after one and a half. Rangers leading Cleveland 5 nothing. West is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer today during the final days of the Ford Freedom Sales event and see why Ford is the best in Texas. Hungry? How about that? Holy cow. <laughs> Pretty good looking food. Bottom of the second inning, and Robinson Torino's the only Ranger that did not bat in the top, or I should say in the bottom of the first, is up there now to start this inning off. Torino's at 183 with the average, eight home runs, 18 driven in. Shoots one to the right side, but Santana able to cut it off. One gone. And now back to the top of the Ranger order for Nomar Mazzara. Right fielder, Nomar. 
Orozco. Gave up the uh, five runs in the first inning. Most five run innings this year in the American League. Rangers were on top for quite a while, but they went into a, a slowdown. Boston now with 19, Blue Jays with 17, and the Rangers very respectably with 15. Mazzara fouling that first pitch off. No more. Went down swinging, had an eight pitch at bat in the first. That really got the, uh, the inning going the right way for the Rangers. Carrasco ended up throwing almost 30 pitches in that first inning. The 0 1. Now 1 1. I think all but one of those runs in the first inning were unearned. Yeah, I think they were too. If my, uh, my arithmetic is correct. But the count for the Rangers at the bottom of the zone, one and two to no mark. Among rookie hitters in the American League, Mazzara tied with Max Kepler for uh, the home run leadership. 15. Tyler Naquin out there in center field for the Indians in third with 14 home runs. Enjoyed reading that article, the recap of the game that Naquin won with a walk-off, or actually a runoff, uh, inside the park home run. Had a shot of him coming down the line from third to finish off that thing. And <laughs> Tom Hamilton, the uh, great radio man for the Cleveland Indians, called him Usain uh, Bolt no Naquin. <laughs> I think that was the day after that, that Bolt had won the, the 100 or 200, whichever it was. <laughs> Tom's got some great calls, boy. Aren't, aren't many announcers that put more into a call than no, Tom Hamilton you're does. Right. And Tyler Nick went out there playing pretty mostly against uh, right-handed starters. He and Rajai Davis in, in a platoon in center field. Still one and two to Mazzara. Now the count evens. But Nomar again <laughs> working on a pretty long count against Carrasco. He's thrown 38 pitches, probably 15 of them have been to Nomar. Yeah, that's about right. Close to it. Yeah. Mazzara hitting out of that wide open stance as Carrasco sets. Full count. You know, second time now that he's gone all the way in the count. Mazzara with one out this time trying to get aboard in front of Ian Desmond. Now this will be the 16th pitch of the two at bats. And we're going to have at least 17. Cross goes probably standing out there saying, okay, look, I'm going to throw the ball down the middle. You do whatever you want to. I'm tired of throwing to you. Let's go ahead and put it in place someplace. Now throw him that high changeup that he threw to Mitch. That'd be good. See if he can hit that one. That'd be good. Now Carrasco ready. Up the middle between the legs into center field. And Mazzara. <laughs> he just worn out Carrasco and almost knocked him off the mound. Uh, I think Jeff Bannister would say after these two at bats, that's exactly what I'm hoping my leadoff hitter does. Yeah. And Nomar's giving it to him. Let's check in with Emily Jones. Yeah, and Nomar Mazzara making his third start in that leadoff spot, and he admitted that it does take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, it felt really weird, you know, like coming, leading off the game. So after that, that I bat, was like, I feel like totally no more. Like everything was fine. Like I feel pretty good, like on my legs and everything. But the, the first at bat was like a, li a little rush, you know. But after after that, I was back in track. 
So we said really the only at bat that's different is that very first at bat of the game because after that you don't know if you're going to lead off an inning or be second or whatever. Right. But he said that very first inning there is a little bit of something to it and you do feel the need you know to let your teammates see more to take a few more pitches and he did that tonight taking those eight pitches even though he didn't get on base you have to think that that affected the way things developed further down the line in that first inning. Yeah definitely. And the appeal down to first and that is a swing. According to John Tom Payne down there. 17 pitches. To Nomar Mazzara. 17 of the 40. That uh, Carrasco had thrown to that point. Yeah, that's a good point what M said Buzz uh, if, you, if you're out there pitching you have to throw eight or nine or ten pitches to the leadoff hitter even if you get him out. Yeah. That can affect you later in the inning oh, can yeah, it no doubt. No doubt. A good time. A good job that time. I was watching Tom when you were talking that Bizarre again anticipating that ball in the dirt didn't get for, away from uh, Perez that far. But Bizarre as soon as that ball went into the dirt and he saw it not caught cleanly he was off and running. Yeah. Thought for a second that Perez might have a chance but he couldn't couldn't find the ball couldn't pick it up and throw it. But yeah back to your point about uh, that is very frustrating it. Uh, you know you generally when you throw that many pitches to a hitter uh, to start off a ball game you have uh, gone through your repertoire you know yeah. you're not throwing the same pitch each time so guys have a pretty good idea of what uh, what you're featuring that night has been gone on strikes here and he's now one for two. And I think the idea for most pitchers is you know the first guy or the first two guys in the first inning. I don't want to throw everything I have. I don't want guys to see it that early. I mm -hmm. want to be able to save something for later on. And boy, if you have to work a lot of pitches, that thing goes right down the drain. It was Beltran who had uh, a base hit on the infield. He singled to third to break that 0 for 32 streak. Carlos then came around to score on the Mitch Moreland grand slam in the first inning. Trying to add on for the Rangers. He's got Mazzara out there at second and two outs. Two and oh. And this time with uh, Mazzara at second. And what happened the, the first time up, Ramirez a little bit closer to the line third. See the shortstop, Lindor, still shading. Pretty much straight up the middle. A couple of steps, maybe to the shortstop side. That change up on 2 and 0, oh and he gets it in for a strike. Now Beltran snapping that uh, career long over. His previous long had been uh, 0 for 24. That was. Back in 2000 with Kansas City. Kiptis throws him out, and that'll do it for the Rangers. They get a hit, but strand a runner. We have finished two tonight at Globe Life Park. The Rangers leading the Indians 5 0 on Fox Sports Southwest.
here at Globe Life Park. The Rangers and Indians play a 2:05 game. And the first 15,000 fans in the ballpark will take home a Texas Rangers Star Wars poster. That's compliments of Takis. Purchase your tickets today at TexasRangers.com. And may the force be with you. A.J. Griffin working to the top of the order. He drops that slow curveball in to Carlos Santana for strike one. Santana grounded out to first, his first time up. It's hard for the fans to tell one pitch for another from another. In fact, without a monitor, it's hard for us to tell sure. one pitch for another, unless it's that slow curveball. <laughs> Even the fans sitting out in left field, when they see that, they know it's something different. As you can tell how slow it goes. And not many guys in the league that can throw that kind of a pitch. He throws a lot of them. Good changeup yeah. right there. You Darvish throws one occasionally. There have been some pitchers that throw one. Much slower than that. The right. old Ephus pitch. Remember yep. Steve Hamilton? He I used do. to throw that thing. A high, he used to like slow pitch softball, even higher than that. He threw like a high fly to the pit to the catcher. Louis Tion occasionally would put his foot down on the ground and then lob a little ball in like that. I, I would think as a hitter, it's pretty tough to adjust to hitting a ball that's coming straight down the yeah, hole. It is. <laughs> it is. That curveball stayed high and outside. The count is now full to Santana so he's leading off here in the third Jason Kipnis the second baseman will follow AJ Griffin with 30 pitches under his belt and number 31 is on the way still three and two. AJ 22 strikes nine balls this evening. First long count that he's had against any hitter. This is the uh, eighth pitch coming up. And we're going to have a ninth to Santana. AJ back to the plate. Santana making it a little bit rough on AJ to start this inning. Santana, a 248 hitter. Excellent on base percentage. And this guy up among the league leaders and walks almost every year. There's that slow breaking ball that's flowing inside for ball four. AJ Griffin couldn't get Santana to swing at that pitch. There's a leadoff walk. Nobody out. Kept this coming up. And we're going to send it over to Daniel Larson for a Chevy game break. All right, Dana, thank you. That is absolutely incredible. Sanchez is just, well, for a young man to do that, especially when you're playing with the Yankees, I, mean, I, can't, I can't imagine any other place that uh, it would be as newsworthy as it is in New York. That would be top of the list. Boston might be a close second. Yeah, that's true. But do it as a Yankee. You're off to a pretty flying start. Kipnis waited on that. Hits a towering pop-up. Rugnet's going to run out of room. That's back in the fifth row. No one and two to Kipnis. Jason Kipnis went down swinging at that big slow curveball in the first inning. One on. Nobody out here in the top of the third. Great crowd on hand out here at Globe Live Park tonight. Looks to be in the Low 40,000s. A good shot of Globe Life. Beautiful evening. Very few clouds. Light breeze blowing in from left field. Temperature at 87 degrees at this point. And Kipnis fouling that pitch off.
Giftness, two out of nine in this series against the Rangers. Griffin checks Santana at first. Still two and two. Now AJ has had to use 10 pitches already to the first two hitters in this inning. 11 pitches, excuse me. Giving up a walk to uh, Santana. Has a 2-2 pitch to Kiptis. That's high and away. Three balls and two strikes. Robinson Torino's out in front of the plate saying, okay, calm down now. We need to need to have you throw a strike here. Giftis, the number two hitter, will be followed by the shortstop, Francisco Lindor. Good hitting teams. You can't really afford to walk a lot of folks. No, nope, not the two guys at the top of the order for the guys in the middle. There goes Santana. Pitch swung on a miss. Throw to second. And out from here to Waxahachie is Santana. That's one way to get out of it. Said, here's my best fastball, 89 miles an hour. See if you can hit it. Kipnis missed it. And Robinson gunned down the runner. Perfect throw. That's one as a runner. You're not really trying to steal second. You're just trying to maybe stay out of a double play. Might not have had the greatest jump, counting on the hitter. To put yeah. the ball in play and didn't happen that time. No, a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Base is empty and two away for Lindor. And there's that slow hook that Lindor waves at. 0 and 2. And bounces out in front of home plate. That was the 21st pitch of the inning for A.J. Griffin. But A.J., after that uh, caught stealing, able to work from the windup. Got him swinging. Made that 90-mile-an-hour fastball look like 100. Sure did. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, three in the game for A.J. Griffin. Nothing going for the drive after two and a half. Rangers five, Indians nothing. Country will be performing a uh, post-game concert tomorrow. It's presented by Buckner International. You can watch the Rangers take on the Indians in a 205 game, then enjoy the concert after the ball game. To buy tickets for the game or to get your field passes for the concert, just visit TexasRangers.com slash concerts. Well, Adrian Beltre leading off here in the Ranger third inning. Beltre, Odor, and Gomez. Carlos Carrasco. A little high and tight to Adrian. 
Beltre reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Came around to score on Moreland's grand slam. Carrasco with his 51st pitch of the night. It's a ball and a strike. Pretty marked contrast. Carrasco at, uh, at 51 and A.J. Griffin at uh, about 46. And he's pitched an inning more. One and two to Adrian. Adrian. Well, the Rangers put five on the board in the first inning. Three hits, including the grand slam. There was an error that uh, played a big part in that inning. Rangers taking advantage. Another one two pitch. Ramirez triggers the throw across. Atrian is gone. One gone. And Rugnet Odor coming. Second baseman, Rugnet Odor. Odor was the one that hit that uh, two hopper to first that caromed off the shoulder of Carlos Santana for the error in the first inning. Although, I, Tom, I think both you and I would agree that on second, look that might have been a, a base hit yeah. it was kind of a wicked bounce yeah it wasn't as routine an error as it looked based on the way the ball bounced I can understand the call for sure, sure. But if it was ruled a hit I wouldn't have been shocked at that either Went right off the right shoulder of uh, Carlos Santana all in one Take you back to that first inning. Judge for yourself. Watch the last hop right here, and how he has his glove to the left, and the ball ends up on the right. Might have had a lot of spin on it that caused that. And that's giving the benefit of the doubt to Santana. It might have just been a case where he had his glove in the <laughs> wrong place to begin with. Could have. <laughs> but if you're the scorekeeper and you see that last big hop, you have a pretty hard time. Calling it a base hit, I guess. Yeah, the other thing, Santana looked like he turned his body. He was going to play the ball off to his left. Yeah. With his body turned, that made it almost impossible for him to react to the ball going back to his right. Yeah, it did. One and two to Odor. Just able to get a piece of that high fastball. I want to do a shout out to. Two of our friends, Judy Hall and Karen Holder from China Spring ISD Education Foundation. They come to a lot of games and they always bring us a gift. So, ladies, thank you for the support and thank you for the nice gift every time. Roberto Perez flashing the signs out. He and Carrasco are together. Rip to left center field. That is going to be up the alley and head to the wall. Odor got a great jump out of the box, and he's going to put the brakes on. Nice job by Naquin, the center fielder, to get there quickly. Odor was thinking three coming out of the box. Yeah. And he was held to a double. Love to see that type of a hit. Such a pretty hit. Weight on the ball, hit it where it's pitched, and line it into the gap. Ball away, outside corner, wait on it, take a perfect swing at it. Didn't try to take too big of a swing with two strikes, more of a contact swing. And look how the ball jumped off his bat anyway. It's kind of like Kurt Dyker when he's out on the golf course and he's about 190 yards away. Pulls out his eight iron, takes a nice easy swing, flies the green into the parking lot. Kind of the same kind of same kind of thing. Take you don't two. have you don't have to take a huge swing for the ball to jump off your club or off your back. Is that why he doesn't talk for the next hour and a half? He won't say a word to you? Because the ball went too yeah. far? Yeah, I tell him if I could hit my eight iron that far, I wouldn't care where it went. <laughs> I'd hit it on top of the clubhouse roof and be jumping up and down. <laughs> One 
Carlos Gomez takes Sloan inside, two balls and no strikes. I'd say that's kind of right where he likes it, Buzz. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Those uh, hot zones pretty well line up out there. I'd love to see the hot zones for the majority of players 40 years ago. And it may be the same varied hot zones as it is right now. It just seems like back then hitters as a group couldn't hit the pitch on the outside right. corner like that to, yeah. to the opposite way. Say, I, I don't think you would have seen anybody with a hot zone from the middle of the plate away. I don't think so either. Then. Not many. Not like now. I mean, he swung at that pitch like it was right down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Two and one to Gomez. Two and two. Yeah, I think you also saw pitchers that were willing to enforce the idea that you can't go outside and hit yeah. that ball. <laughs> Two and two now. Odor getting his lead out there at second. He did after the uh, one out double in scoring position. Foul tipped into the glove. I thought. Yeah. It was. Jeff Kellogg had to had to tell Carlos Gomez that uh, it didn't bounce. It uh, went straight into the glove of Roberto Perez. That's strikeout number four. Galloway, the uh, pitching coach, going to go out there and have a chat with uh, Orland at the plate and first base open. Probably saying, don't throw him a changeup on the first pitch. <laughs> and if you do, like Perez said after the fact, keep that thing down. That's kind of the story, Buzz, that, you know, we'll say, boy, how can you throw him a changeup on the first pitch? But if he threw the changeup down where he wanted it, yeah. might not have been, it's not necessarily the kind of pitch, it's where you throw it. Yeah, if that, and I believe that. I, I don't think you can, you can make a bad pitch selection as long as it's something you usually throw. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it's one of your top two or three pitches. Yeah, you don't want to break out a knuckleball in the, <laughs> in the middle of a game. Rather just, not. Just for the heck of it. <laughs> and we'll take you back to that first inning. Mitch Warland up with two outs. The base is juiced. And there is that high changeup. It was screaming hit me the minute Carrasco let it go and Mitch obliged. The only thing that could have gone wrong there is he hooked it foul and he didn't. A 22nd home run of the year for Moreland. And be careful with Mitch too. We've seen him get in streaks this year and years past. And he won't hit just one. He'll go two or three in uh, several games. Well, I would definitely pitch him carefully, but if you do walk him, Elvis has been pretty good all season long with yep. men in scoring position, so you feel pretty good about that, too. And I would think that anybody on the Cleveland staff would have trouble pitching to Elvis, walking a guy to pitch to Elvis. Yeah, they've seen they've <laughs> seen Elvis over the years against the tribe. That hits in 52 of the 55 games he's played against him. He hit the ball hard his first time up too to center field. It was an out, but he hit it well. 3 and 0. Oh. Doesn't look like Carrasco has much uh, much inclination to throwing a pitch in the middle of the plate to Mitch. Morland batting seventh. Elvis will follow. Now they're going to go ahead and walk him intentionally. And face to Elvis. Oh, a grand slam and now an intentional walk. Two on with two outs. And Elvis coming out. Time to take a look at uh, our Coors Light cold hard fact. Elvis getting 367 in his career against Cleveland. That's the fourth highest average against the Indians in Major League history. Highest uh, Nomar Garcia Parra at a 374 average. Carrasco ready for the first pitch to Andrews. Ball one. 
will uh, go all time against these Indians. Odeby McDowell, former Ranger first round pick. Wow. 405 career average. Omar Marzia, Marcia Par, Garcia Parra is a 374. And Ike Boone. Probably why they wanted to trade for him so badly every year. <laughs> <laughs> they finally got him, too, yeah. for that trade for Julio. That's right. Ripped down the line. It's going to be a fair ball and headed to the corner. Odor scores. Moreland being waved around third. Mitch is going to score without a throw. It's a two-run double for Elvis Andrews. 7-0 Rangers. Well, it's, it's pretty much exactly how we saw it. You definitely want to pitch carefully to Mitch because, as you said, Buzz, Buzz, the home runs can come in bunches. But at the same time, you got a tough assignment facing Elvis with men on base, too. And he made him pay for it. Now that, I, I think as far as fans are concerned, reflects on the manager, but it reflects more, in my mind, on the lack of execution of the pitch. Yep. Yep. They got a good pitch to hit, no doubt. The theory is fine, but uh, execution to the next hitter is what uh, made it look kind of bad. Yep. Oh, well, Elvis, two more RBI, and he now has 54. As he's got. Uh, I thought that was Wash for a second. <laughs> he got the senior Jedi not going. <laughs> well, Elvis, now 53 of 55 games against the Tribe. A seven nothing. Here's Robinson Chirinos for his second at bat of the evening. Well, it's going to be Carrasco's 70th pitch in the third inning. And he's coming off some pretty good pitching, too. Yes, he is. Last start was eight innings of shutout ball, no walks, nine strikeouts against the A's. Last 28 and two thirds innings, 37 strikeouts. His road record has been great as well. Six and three with a 174 best. Road ERA in the major leagues went up, went up a little today though. Yeah, sure has. Jeff Manship loosening in that uh, Indian bullpen. 0-1 to Robinson Chirinos. You now the seven runs, one short of the most runs that. Carrasco is allowed in any one ball game this year. He gave up eight to the Twins. Another Ranger nemesis. Nothing in two. That game against Minnesota, the second of August. Carrasco gave up uh, eight runs on nine hits in three and two thirds, and here in two and two thirds, he's given up seven runs on six hits. Elvis, the latest to uh, make him pay. Two run, two out double. Called strike three. Roscoe got the uh, call on that pitch, and uh, Torino's not very happy but Elvis Andrews with a key two out two run double it's the Rangers on the board for two more two runs on two hits one man left after three Rangers seven Indians nothing
Here, Jamie Ben, Dallas Stars captain. Here, checking out the Rangers. I guess uh, how's the offseason been going? It's been going pretty good. Uh, you know, just doing some some uh, post surgery rehabil rehabilitation, but uh, enjoying uh, Texas Rangers games tonight. Yeah, you guys get underway training camp coming up when? Uh, September 22nd, we're going to head down to uh, Cedar Park, Austin, Texas, and, and get underway. There we go. Now, I understand you played a little baseball in high school. What kind of what position did you play? What kind of player were you, Jamie? It was uh, center field. I kind of like to a uh, little speed, so track down the fly balls nice. and, and uh, hit for some average. There we go. And you had batting practice here a couple years ago. What kind of power? Yeah, warning track power. Warning track yeah, power. I couldn't get one out, but uh, my brother did, that's for sure. That's good. All right, good to see you. Looking forward to the season starting in October. And you guys had a great run last year. Best of luck this year. Appreciate it, Jamie. Appreciate Thank, it. You. Thank you. Buzz? All right, Doxy. <laughs> that's an honest assessment, assessment of one's talent. Yeah. A lot of people don't even have warning track power. <laughs> they have infield power. Yeah, the only problem I had was contact. Yeah. Just didn't make it that often. I thought I had pretty good power, but I never found out. <laughs> and Napoli down on strikes. AJ Griffin has found his punch out pitch. Yeah, it's three it's in a row. Probably best velocity he's had on his fastball all year, consistently around 89 miles an hour. A nice little movement right at the end on that fastball. And it came in. Tied Nap up. A fourth strikeout for the evening now, and Jose Ramirez, who had an infield single, takes strike one. Ramirez hit one into the hole, and this time Elvis kind of shading him uh, a little more toward that hole on the left side. Elvis had been more up the middle, say right about where the uh, second base umpire Brian Onora, that kind of a line. One and two. Oh, Ramirez with that base hit now, a 308 average. That's the uh, top mark on this Indian ball club. Two and two. Engines, we were talking about this last night, uh, had much more trouble hitting away from Cleveland. As a team, they hit 293 at home in progressive field. On the road, 239. And Ramirez waiting nicely on that slow curveball and he just pokes it into right field for a one out single. Ramirez with his second hit of the night. And that is the third Cleveland hit all overall. So one on Lonnie Chisenhall, the right fielder, will step in. Just an all sky to center back in the second inning. And Torino's going to go out and remind A.J. Griffin of, of something they'd talked about, whatever that happened to be. It looks like A.J.'s not able to get the ball down on demand. And... Uh, Sometimes a catcher will notice something about uh, the mechanics of what it what it looks like coming toward him and go out and relay that to the pitcher and hopefully it'll click and say okay I know what to do with that. Make an adjustment and get it right down there. Like that. Yeah. You know, even a little bit lower. <laughs> lower than that. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, that's going the right direction. Like that. Like that. that that is where you want it. Pretty good changeup right there, yeah. tailing down in a way. AJ's had that, this may be as good a changeup yeah. as we've seen him have. He's thrown several of them in a while. One and two to Chisnall. And he comes back with that fastball and uh, almost got it by him. Chisnall at 298 overall. And, uh, Another one of the Indians that's a little bit better at home than he is on the road. About a 40-point difference. 322 at home and 281 on the road. Another 1-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Buried that one down and in. That is strikeout number five for Griffin. Well, the last four outs have been strikeouts. 
And that's the change up again. So with Ramirez still at first, here's Abraham Almonte who flied out to left in the second inning. Almonte, the switch hitter up there from the left side. Almonte about a, a 70 point difference home and road. Yeah, 231 average on the road and just over 300 at home. Almonte three out of seven in this series against the Rangers. We'll toss down at first Ramirez though back in plenty of time. A ball and a strike to count. Well, so far in this series, it has not really been close after about the second inning. Almonte, it's a lazy fly ball out to Nomar Mazzara, and that'll do it. No runs a hit and one man left for the Cleveland Indians. After three and a half, Rangers seven, Indians nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Hispanic Heritage Day with Elena Ornelas. Rangers uh, play on Saturday, September the 3rd, Houston in town. It's uh, Hispanic Heritage Day out here in Globe White Park. It'll be a 3:05 game between the Rangers and the Astros. Head on out to the ballpark early for some special pregame oh, yeah, celebration. No oh, yeah, no Get your tickets now at TexasRangers.com for Hispanic no Heritage Day. <laughs> Noche Hispana, próximo 3 de septiembre, la banda Vientos de Guanajuato. Si nos está viendo en la pantalla de televisión, si tiene televisión. Bueno, Ornelas y uh, Jose Guzman, handling the Spanish broadcast. Bottom of the fourth inning, top of the Ranger order once again. Third time that Nomar Mazara has uh, stepped into the batter's box tonight. Carlos Carrasco. Throws a strike on the outside corner. Nomar, one for two this evening. Singled his last time up. The ball right back through the legs of Carlos Carrasco into center field. Indian right-hander getting ready for his 75th pitch of the night. One and two after the foul ball. Zara now with a base hit has a five-game hitting streak going. 
Omar steadily on the climb. He'd gone through a about a two-month dive. Yeah, not a dive. He tailed off a bit. He got up to such a hot start for the first two months that he was in the big leagues, hitting about 340. He has tailed back down a little bit. Nothing wrong with 283, though. He's gone on strikes here as Carrasco gets his fifth. One out for Ian Desmond. Center fielder, Ian Desmond. Desmond singled back in the first inning. Struck out in the second against Carrasco. So Ian now with uh, hits in 14 of his last 17 ball games. Nothing and one. Looks like Desmond got a change up and stayed up for him too. Here's that note we were talking about. 14 out of 17, and he finally got off the uh, singles binge that he was on in, in August. Had that uh, home run in Cincinnati in the second game. It was his first extra base hit in the month. First home run in almost a complete month. July 27th had been the last time he homered. Now the 1 1 offering to him. To the right side, right between the dive of Santana and the sprawling dive of Kiptis. I don't think he could have located a ground ball better than that. Each one of them barely missed it. First baseman playing way off the line. Santana can't get to it. Kipnis dives and he can't either. He hit a lot of balls right at somebody, but there's an example of one. You couldn't have placed it any better than that. <laughs> oh, Ian Desmond with another multi hit game. He is two for three tonight. For Desmond, that's his 47th of the year. Carlos Beltran takes strike one. Carlos, an infield single in the first. A sharp ground ball to second. Ian Desmond among the league leaders in multi-hit games. Mookie Betts at the top spot with 55 games. And uh, Altuve with 53. And then Desmond with 47. Let's go a long look in to Perez. A ball and a strike. Now the long over that Carlos Beltran ended this evening came on the heels of uh, a four hit ball game for him. One of the oddities of the game of baseball where a long streak one way followed by a long streak the other way sometimes. Carlos, though, very even keeled throughout the whole thing. Sure, he was churning a little bit inside. He knew exactly what was going on, but he'd been through stretches before where things had not gone well. He figured out what to do to get him on the right track, and normally that was keep working. Beltran waiting. Desmond drawing some attention at first. Carrasco drawing the attention of the fans, and now Mickey Callaway, the pitching coach, on his way out one more time. Sometimes, I, I'm not going to say in this situation it's an absolute, but sometimes. See a pitcher throw to first base when he's in a, a game that's, you know, the guy's not going to be running. It's an indication that the pitcher's uh, not feeling very well, like arm wise. Really doesn't want to throw the ball to home plate. Trying to get loose. <laughs> Something. 
trying to prevent any any more run scoring. So you keep trying to pick the guy off. Can't first. hit it if you throw it to That's first. Right. <laughs> exactly. That stall strategy. Now the one one to Beltran. One and two. Manship again. Loosening. It looks like uh, he's loosening in earnest this time. Shouldn't take him that long. He was up an inning or so ago. Now Carrasco, after a long look in, comes set. Popped up down the left field line. Long run for Ramirez. Coming in Almonte, and the ball drops fair, and everybody's going to be safe. Well, it looked like Ramirez could have caught that ball. It appeared that Almonte called him off. Don't know for sure, but that's what it looked like. And then Almonte didn't get to it. There were a couple, couple of well-placed balls right there. <laughs> one by Desmond and one by Belcher, and one grounder and one pop-up. Watch how fast Ramirez gets to that ball. He sprints after it. Got a pretty good beat on it right here. But he gets out of the way. Almonte must have called for it. Yeah. And then never got there. Looked like Almonte called for it, then thought he might run into uh, Ramirez, so he backed off. No, second base hit of the night for uh, Carlos Beltran. Rangers have runners at first and second with one out for Adrian Beltran. Those two hits by Beltran are classic slump busters. I guess so, boy. <laughs> Dribbler to shortstop and a blooper to left. Yeah. But, you know, we've talked about the balls that Billy Hamilton took away from him. Oh, yeah. So he had a few coming. Yeah, he's nowhere close to being, being even with those. Beltre takes that breaking ball for strike one. Yeah, there's the, you can see Almate going, I got it, I got it. No, I don't have it. But he really didn't. <laughs> I've got it, I've got it. You take it. Yeah, please, help me out here. No, a result, Rangers at first and second. Carlos Carrasco getting set for his 85th pitch of the night. Beltre is reached on a fielder's choice and grounded to third. One and one. Adrian. <laughs> Staying loose. Keep those feet moving. Yep. Got to shift those puppies. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch coming. Trey's average currently at 288. Well, the calendar turns to the second half of the season, and especially when it flips over to August, Adrian Beltre heats up, and he has been true to form this year. Two and two. Adrian Beltre, very low swing and miss rate, just a bit over 16%. Uh, our analytics stat of the day for you. Adrian, uh, one of the lowest strikeout rates of any hitter in baseball. Got him swinging here, though. Carrasco, the sixth strikeout of the night. The second baseman, I think that is seventh strikeout of the night. Oh, two outs, runners still at first and second. Rugnet Odor 
has reached on an error and doubled. Drove in his 64th run of the year on that error in the first inning. He has scored two runs tonight. Trying to add on to the Ranger lead. Odor now with that seven game hitting streak intact. Great look from over the uh, Indians bullpen out there in left center field. Our RF camera roaming around Globe Life Park tonight. Desmond, the runner at second, Beltran at first. One ball and one strike. And having to skip rope to get out of the way of that Carrasco pitch. That last offering, the 90th pitch of the night for Carrasco, and he's just about at his limit, or what has been established as his limit. He hasn't gone into the hundreds in his last uh, six starts. Yeah, his 99 pitches in Oakland in eight innings, quite a bit different than his 90 pitches here today in four innings. Yeah. Probably about 20 to 15 to 20 degrees hotter here, and jamming all those pitches into a shorter period of time. Right. A lot of what you would call high leverage situations to throw pitches in. People running around the bases. And still trying to figure out a way to get out of this fourth inning. Odor wagging that bat back and forth. Two balls, two strikes. Rangers have seven runs on eight hits tonight. Indians, no runs on three hits. A couple of hits for the guys on base. Desmond with a single, Beltran with a single. Second and first, respectively. Foul tip into the glove of Perez, and that'll do it for the Rangers. No runs. Two hits and two left. We have finished four at Globe Live Park. It's the Rangers seven, the Indians nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide.
and by the all-new three-row Mazda CX-9. Meticulously crafted for driving because driving matters. A beautiful shot of Globe Live Park. Delightful night here in uh, Arlington, Texas. Big crowd on hand there seeing the Rangers do a number so far on the Cleveland Indians. Seven nothing as the Indians come to bat here in the fifth inning and Tyler Naquin lofts a fly ball to left. That chases Carlos Gomez back. Back onto the track to make the grab for out number one. Yeah, pretty graceful going after that ball directly over his head. Had a turn and go the other way. Carlos has been a center fielder. Balls over his other shoulder. Back pedals about as gracefully as you possibly can. His head never moved. Nice to have an outfield full of guys that have played center field before. That's yeah. The one out, Roberto Perez bluffing a bunt, and that didn't uh, impress anybody. Adrian Beltre stood there. Mitch Moreland stood there. Perez took it for strike one. Now one and one. Perez grounded his second his first time up. Catchers get no respect when they show bunt. That just <laughs> <laughs> I got a catcher that was a pretty good bunter about six or seven years ago here. Probably had about eight or ten bunt hits, drag bunt down the third oh, base yeah. line. Yeah. Gerald Laird. Gerald Laird, that's right. Yep, he did. <laughs> 15. He was number 15. He said he was one man, five tools. <laughs> Gerald was a likable guy. Yes, he was. Pretty good catcher, too. He could, yeah, uh, did a nice job for the Rangers. Long, yeah. It's fouled back. Cat remains even at two balls and two strikes. Perez batting in the number nine slot for uh, Terry Francona's ball club. A.J. Griffin has the sign. And a base hit to right center field. Bizarro over to cut it off. And a suddenly resurgent Roberto Perez as his uh, fifth hit in the last two nights. Yeah, the first time off the ball that he hit. Was a hard ground ball that Odor made a nice play to his left on him. Could have had a base hit. Been on first and second at the time. A nice play by Odor to get out of that inning. Bottom of the second, top of the second. A one on, one out. Now back to the top of the order for the tribe, and that means Carlos Santana. Santana tonight has walked and grounded to first. Not thinking about walk there. He was thinking about. A two run blast. 248 average for Santana. Second on the team with 27 home runs. You remember the first two games of the series, he batted behind Mike Napoli in the fifth place. There's that slow hook, and he waited and waited, and then by the time he decided to swing, it was too late. Oh, 2 That makes that 87 look like a 97. And 20, 21, 22, 23 mile an hour difference between the slow curveball and uh, A.J. Griffin's fastball. That's enough to give hitters a, a pretty good size problem, depending on what kind of execution you have. Yeah, and we see it all the time with AJ. I've seen it in this game tonight. Way out in front of the curveball, a little bit behind the fastball. Five strikeouts for AJ. Rangers going to an overshift with Santana up there. Elvis Andrews on the second base or on the first base side of second. Adrian Beltre about halfway between second and third. A ball and two strikes. That 
will even the count. Full count. Well, Griffin unable to uh, get Santana to offer it either of the last two pitches. It's gone full. Santana, the leadoff man in the order. Jason Kipnis, the second baseman, will follow. Yeah, Santana doesn't hit for an average, but he's a tough guy to pitch to. Doesn't strike out a lot. And he does walk a lot. Fourth in the league in walks, 69 walks. And he's got a pretty good idea what he's doing at the plate. This is hit well to left center field. Desmond on the run at the track and makes the catch. Back to first goes Perez. A good jump by Ian Desmond, who's playing over toward right center a couple of steps. He got a great break on the ball and right in front of the 404 sign put it away. A pretty well hit ball by Santana. Got a fastball out over the plate. And here's what you're talking about, Buzz. Ian Desmond runs it down at the track. No, that is a long out number two. Nice play by Desmond. Brings up Jason Kipnis. Kipnis tonight has struck out both times that he has faced Griffin. And he gets fisted here, a little pop up to Andrews. Yeah, that'll do it. No, a one out single to Perez, but he is left stranded. We played half the ball game tonight. At Globe Live Park, the Rangers leading 7-0. Texas Chili Company. It's a 105 matinee game. It also features $10 tickets in the Lexus Club Terrace and the upper level courtesy of Fox Sports Southwest. And 105.3 The Fan. Be sure to wear your red and use the coupon code REDOUT on TexasRangers.com slash specials. And Mariners coming in starting Monday night. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. And it is red out out here at Globe Life Park. Jeff Manship, the uh, San Antonio native, going to work now. He takes over for Carlos Carrasco. Manship, the 31-year-old, came over to Cleveland last year. Signed a minor league free agent deal with the Tribe before the 2015 season. He appeared in 32 games last year with the Indians. Part of that bullpen that has become very, very solid. 
Carlos Gomez leading off and pops it up shallow right field. Kipped is called off by Chisenhall. He struggled a little bit hanging on to that ball at the last second. No one gone. Mitch Moreland coming up. But first, we're going to send it over to Dana Larson for a Chevy game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Here is the Rangers leading 7 0 in large part because the man at the plate. Mitch Moreland, that grand slam home run in the first inning. Capped off a five-run outburst. First time the Rangers have done damage in the first inning like that for a while. That's up the middle. Lindor coming up with it. The throw, and they got him. Wow, what a play. Mitch absolutely robbed. That's Ramir that, that was Ramirez. I think it's Ramir Ramirez again. He's so agile. You don't think he's a third baseman going after those balls. Saw him come from second base toward third base and not get the runner early in the game, but make a beautiful play. But this ball looks like it's into center field. And Ramirez shows why he's got the actions to play any position yeah. on the field, including shortstop. Nice play. Well, wow. Jose Ramirez been doing it all for the Indians. That guy's a manager's dream. Maybe not the sheer range of a, a Lindor. No, but probably not. He's he's every bit as quick. Elvis had a double his last time on drove in a couple. Boy, that's a nice play. Yeah, now the hard part. You got to get up and get rid of it accurately and quickly. So Moreland, one for two after that uh, great play. He's retired. Two outs. Elvis up there. A ball and two strikes. <laughs> Elvis, a very defensive swing. And he fouls it off to stay alive. Elvis, two run double in the third inning. It's the last time the Rangers have scored. Elvis plating those two has now driven in 54 runs this year. 13 shy of his career high. And that is a base hit by Lindor. That was a big turn. Two more hits for the Rangers shortstop against the Indians. Now this one's hit a little bit harder and a little bit more to the left, and the infielder wasn't quite able to get to that one. Well, for the Rangers, their ninth base hit of the night. Elvis has a couple of them. That brings up Robinson Chirinos. Chirinos grounded out and struck out against Carlos Carrasco. 0-1-1. Line on Carrasco worked four innings, gave up uh, eight hits, seven runs, three of them earned. One walk and eight strikeouts. That's, that's a line you don't see very often. Four innings and no. give up seven runs and strike out eight. They gave up a couple of hard hit balls. They also pitched in a little bit of bad luck in the mm -hmm. first inning where he gave up five runs. A ground ball that wasn't turned into an out. Another one turned into an error. Four unearned runs. But the Rangers Rangers made him work. They made him throw a lot of pitches. Now Chirinos currently batting at 180. As Elvis at first with two outs. Elvis on the move and the pitch fouled away. In the old days, stealing with a seven run lead in the fifth inning might have raised a few eyebrows. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. The running game is accepted now. It's just. Terry Francona will tell you, and Jeff Bannister will tell you, you don't shut the running down anymore with the with teams' abilities to come back late in games. Or that, I should say, where you shut it down has been pushed back a bit.
Still one and two to Robinson. Bad chip okays the sign. Two and two. Torino's facing Manship. Manship mentioned out of San Antonio and played his collegiate ball at Notre Dame. Very good college player. player and it's out of play. Drafted by the Minnesota Twins back in the uh, 2006 draft. Signed with Minnesota. Made his uh, major league debut with them. 2009 season. Manship peering in for the sign. He's ready to work. trying to catch that in the first row and he slapped at it yeah and knocked his sunglasses off his hat and he's lucky that was all it knocked off yeah, his I know. Hat. he's okay fortunately had the beer in one hand probably his <laughs> fielding hand a little bit inside now Torinos has the count full now Robinson trying to extend this fifth inning top of the order Nomar Mazzara in that on deck circle Manship being extended the way that uh, Carlos Carrasco was pitch wise. He's about ready to throw his 20th in this inning. Slowly top to third. Ramirez can't find the handle and everybody's safe. And Robinson Chirinos an infield single. Well the Rangers are having the kind of game tonight that the Indians had last night. Hit some balls hard for sure. And also find some holes with ones that aren't hit so hard. The Indians did it all night long last night. Rangers have been doing it all night long tonight. Another example of it right there. Ramirez way back at third base was going to have a tough play. And in his haste to get rid of it, couldn't really get, get a good grip on it. No, well, Rangers now in double, double figures with 10 hits tonight. Robinson gets his first and Nomar Mazzara will come up with runners at first and second. Mazzara one for three. He ripped one to center right at Tyler Naquin. But Omar hit it right on the nose, but has nothing to show for it. For the Rangers, no runs, two hits, two left. On to the sixth we go. Rangers on top, 7-0 on Fox Sports Southwest.
Rangers cruising as we head to the top of the sixth inning. And it is a reminder that we are preparing for Red Out the Ballpark coming up next weekend as the Rangers defend first place. Fox Sports Southwest and 105.3 The Fan present $10 tickets in the Lexus Club Terrace and upper level seating sections for August 29th through the 31st. The key is to wear red. Also, $10 tickets available at TexasRangers.com using the coupon code REDOUT. Plus, you can take 20% off of red merchandise at Globe Life Park in Arlington through the 31st. So be sure to get out your red for next weekend's big series here at the ballpark, guys. All right, and thank you. Francisco Lindor getting a line shot to right field, which is pretty much at Nomar Mazar if we're out number one. Well, I was telling you that Dustin Pedroia went four for four last night. Yeah. He's had hits and 11 straight at bats. Wow. 11 for 11. Huh. One shy of the major league record. A couple of Red Sox had done it. Walt Dropo and Pinky Higgins. Must be a Boston thing. Must be. You know, Mike Napoli has flied out tonight and struck out against A.J. Griffin. One and one the count. Napoli currently at 258 for the average. He has been the anchor of this uh, Indians offense in the middle of the order. That was another good changeup, yep. Buzz. Sure was. You know it's a good changeup when it's pretty much right down the middle of the plate and the batter misses it. Sometimes it's because they swung at a pitch out of the strike zone, but that was a pitch right in the middle of the plate. Checked his swing on that slow curveball. And it's uh, two and two now. A.J. Griffin, 85 pitches, 58 strikes, 27 balls tonight. That bat is shattered. A squibbed one hopper to Mitch. Two gone. Boy, there's been a couple balls hit off the handle. The one that Kipnis hit to end the fifth inning was hit just about as softly as that. Elvis looked at the inscription on the bat says, please do not use this in. Look at a little piece flying through the air right there. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis is going to throw it. <laughs> he would have had him too. Well, two outs now. Here's Jose Ramirez, who is two for two. Has, has had a, an infield single into the hole at short. And uh, last time up, lined one to right. Now Ramirez, as you can see, a 3.09 average. Nothing at two. AJ putting up zeros after. Rangers gave him five in the first to work with, added two more in the third. One and two. Except for the third inning, A.J. Griffin has been very economical. In the third inning, the only time that uh, he had walked a hitter tonight. Yeah, that was a long at bat by Santana to lead off that inning. Kipnis, uh, that strike him out, throw him out, double play was on a 3 2 pitch, and I believe that was like a 7 or 8 pitch. Yeah, both of them were long at bats. Right center field, long run for Desmond. He can't get there. Karam kind of gets away from him, so Ramirez not stopping at second. He will motor on over the third, and Jose Ramirez with his third hit of the night. A stand up, two out triple. Second, two out triple for the tribe tonight. In the first inning, Lindor had one. Three for three for Ramirez. He came into the game hitting 306. Done a lot of things well this year. Men in scoring position, 374, 20 stolen bases. That's tied for six in the league. 
32 doubles is also tied for sixth. Chipped in with 10 home runs too. He's also the only major league player with starts in every spot in the lineup. Yeah, isn't that something? That's pretty good. Yeah. It's first through ninth. <laughs> he won't be hitting ninth anymore the way he's swinging no. the bat right now. Not unless they reformulate the 27 Yankees. He might hit ninth <laughs> there, but he is he is something. Doug Brocale out there to uh, talk to A.J. Griffin as much to give Tony Barnett an opportunity to get mm -hmm. loose in that bullpen. A.J. at 91 pitches right now. And that's just about the upper limit of what he's been accustomed to throwing. Well, you don't want to put him in a situation where he's in unexplored territory. And even though it's a 7 nothing lead, you want to have somebody backed up, backing him up just in case. Lonnie Chisinau takes ball one. It's been one of AJ's best starts thus far. Good percentage of strikes. Good results as well. One walk, five strikeouts. There's Tony getting ready. One and one, the count to Chisnall, who is flight out and struck out. Pulled foul outside first, and the count goes to one and two. Well, the Ranger pitching picture with A.J. Griffin spinning a dandy here tonight. We'll also see tomorrow Derek Holland in his second start. Derek coming off a very good outing in his uh, start against Cincinnati. Colby Lewis starting uh, on Monday, another rehab start. And a strikeout of Chisinau for A.J. Griffin. Well, he finishes off the sixth in style after giving up the two out triple he strands Jose Ramirez five and a half in the books Major seven and the Indians nothing. Time now for the Sonic Slam Inning, brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $100 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Forrest Burks from Waxahachie will win $100. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Forrest is going to win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. So Forrest, uh, have a seat now. Good luck to you. Good luck to the Rangers in this Sonic Slam inning. Ian Desmond, Carlos Beltran, Adrian, and Beltre, the uh, first three to do the swinging against the new Indians pitcher. That would be right hander Dan Otero. Desmond tonight, two for three. And first ball swinging. Lindor gobbles up that grounder. A one pitch and one away. The and two for four. Dan Otero, we saw on Thursday night here in the opening game. 48th 
appearance of the year, Otero with a great ERA of 138. Worked 52 in a third innings. And the uh, league hitting just 218 against Otero. First pitch to Carlos Beltran is on the outside corner for strike one. Beltran a couple of hits tonight. He snapped that over and he's had a couple of well-placed base hits this evening. Two for three. Right back to Otero. And quickly there are two away in the Ranger sixth. Third baseman, Adrian Beltre. Next, Otero will face Adrian Beltre. Adrian looking for his first hit of the night. He is 0 for 3, but he has scored a run. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning and came home to score on Mitch Moreland's grand slam home run. Otero trying to go a little more quickly than Adrian was ready for. Otero, a 31-year-old, raised in uh, Miami, Florida, bumps in strike one. Otero played some college ball at Duke and also the University of South Florida. Originally the property of the San Francisco Giants. Oh, and two to Beltre. And Tony Barnett continuing to throw, which would probably mean that we have uh, seen the last of A.J. Griffin for tonight. If that's the case, A.J., six very good innings here this evening. One and two. Griffin, 95 pitches and 66 strikes tonight, which is uh, almost exactly where you want to be. Yep, that was an outstanding effort. He's probably, as we've said, Buzz had his best changeup, might have had his best fastball, too. And Adrian Beltre caught window shopping as Otero hit the outside corner. A seven pitch, sixth inning, sends the Rangers down. We'll move on to inning number seven tonight. The Rangers seven and the Indians nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Board game summary and got off on the right foot as Mitch Moreland flashed his second career grand slam in the first inning. His 22nd home run of the year gave the Rangers a 5 0 lead. Elvis Andrews added two more in the third inning with his two run double. That made it 7 0, and A.J. Griffin has made that stand up as we move to the seventh inning here tonight. And A.J. finished for the evening. Tony Barnett, the 32 year old right hander. Rookie out of uh, Anchorage, Alaska, he is on now to take over. Tony appearing in his 48th ball game, worked a total of 53 innings this year, 2.21 ERA, did a very very good job. And 
this part of the ball game. Sixth, seventh innings. He has uh, been very, very valuable for the Rangers. He'll face the bottom third of the uh, Indians order, Abraham Almonte. And uh, Tony Barnett talking about uh, the right hander, our Kubota power stats. Tonight, last 21 ball games, he has given up two runs, two earned runs in 27 innings. That's an 067 ERA. He's allowing much less than one base runner per nine innings. 159 opponent's batting average. Almonte tonight has flied to left, flied to right. Two and one. Well, A.J. Griffin this evening, six innings of shutout baseball, just five hits. One walk, six strikeouts. And uh, gave no indication at any time that he wasn't in complete control of the ball game. Three and one. Well, Barnett in danger of walking Almonte. He's the number seven hitter. Tyler Naquin, the center fielder, is in the on-deck circle. Ripped into right field, a base hit. Well, Almonte got the advantage in the count and had it pay off. Yep, he swung like he knew that was going to be a fastball, which he did. Seven to nothing game, and he was ready for it. Good swing on this pitch. That is the sixth hit of the night for the Indians, and now with nobody out, Tyler Naquin who has been hit by a pitch and flied out will step in. Naquin a 3.07 average as he faces Tony Barnett. Oh and one after the foul ball. Infield looking for that double play ground ball. The Elvis and uh, Rudnett a step or so to the right. One ball and one strike. Rangers able to turn a, a couple last night after going through a five game drought with no double plays. One and two. And Barnett with a good cut fastball and going down and into the left-handed hitting Naquin. Tyler Naquin, a 25-year-old up in Spring, Texas. Drafted by the Indians in the 2012 draft, the 15th overall pick. And he has gone on strikes as Barnett elevated it with something on it. Yeah, perfect execution of that pitch. See Robinson sit up a little bit in his stance, raise his glove up a little bit higher than normal. And there's the ball pretty much exactly where he was looking for it. And the result was exactly what Tony Barnett was hoping for. No, a single followed by a strikeout. One on, one out now on Roberto Perez. The Indian catcher steps in. Perez one for two. Singled his last time up. Hit the ball sharply both times. One and oh. <laughs> Rangers captain in his uh, in his uh, great Star Wars get up. Technology has Rangers captain kind of messed up. The strike to Perez. An equine Jedi. You see, <laughs> at least he's not dangling that spider in front of people. Yeah, that's true. 
just burned that guy's hand off with a lightsaber, but that's all right. Good breaking ball from Tony Barnett. It's one and two. A tough combination. Sinker in and a slider away. Crowd coming to life a bit behind Tony Barnett and the Rangers. Two balls, two strikes. Last time we saw Tony, the night before last, worked a, a shutout inning. Use 15 pitches on Thursday. Now the 2 2 pitch. Low and inside, 3 and 2. Now Perez has run the count full. He's the number nine hitter. With one out, he's threatening to get aboard for the top of the order in Carlos Santana. Barnett with a payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Perez, a little bit over anxious. Couldn't get on top of that high fastball. They're two gone. First baseman, Carlos Santana. The second straight strikeout for Tony Barnett. Last time up, Carlos Santana. Tom, it's all yours. Okay, well that's about as fast as I ever saw someone get to the <laughs> ball right there. See how far he had to go to get that one, but you mentioned Buzz, he was playing over a little bit in right center field. He got an excellent jump. And when you get an excellent jump and you have his speed, you tend to make those balls look a little bit easier than they are for somebody else. One of the catchphrases used now, the, the root efficiency. Yeah. That was pretty efficient. That was efficient. Pretty much a straight line from where he started to where the ball came down. And I, I think if you had to watch Ian adjust to playing the outfield, then move to center field, you would say probably the toughest adjust, adjustment for him and probably for most other people playing the outfield is the ball hit over your head where you have to go full speed and catch it right near the wall to judge the warning track judge the wall and as the season's gone on obviously as hard as he works and the kind of athlete he is he gets getting better and better at that I can remember when we were in spring training watching the guys and and uh, Ian was making the transition to the to left field at that time just to the outfield mm -hmm. the number of fly balls that he would take on a daily basis so he get through working out with the with the big club and then he go to the minor leagues and, got, and teams were taking batting practice yeah. track balls down there. Yeah that doesn't happen very often but he was dedicated and he's accomplished his goal. He'd say he's still working at it which he is to get even better. Now the one two pitch tried the back door and couldn't quite bring it in. Two and two to Santana. Santana did walk back in the third inning. That fly ball that Ian Desmond tracked down was in the fifth. Chopper right to Mitch Borman at first. He steps on the bag, and that takes care of the Indians. No runs a hit, one left. We'll take the stretch at Globe Life Park in Arlington. Rangers seven, Indians Your nothing. Now well, let's join Chuck Morgan as he introduces and God Bless America. Rise and direct your attention now to the area behind home plate. And welcome country music star and American Idol winner, Scotty McCreary. In honor of all the veterans who have served our country and the servicemen and women who are currently stationed at home and around the world, Scotty will now perform God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the light with a light from above. 
from the mountains and to the prairies and to the ocean white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet by T-Mobile. How about Corey Seager, the younger Seager? 23rd home run of the year today. That's the most in Dodgers history by a shortstop. Multiple hits in 12 of his last 18 games and hitting 452 over those 18 contests. Corey Seager. Well, the Rangers come to bat here in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning, and Andrew Miller, the closer for the uh, Cleveland Indians, has come in to take over. Hey, just when you want to see him in the seventh inning. Miller is 54th ball game of the year and at 145 ERA coming over to the Indians from the Yankees. Miller uh, came to Cleveland on the 31st of July for four minor leaguers. Miller, who was, I guess, made expendable. Uh, Yankees decided that after a roll this Chapman was uh, dealt that they could use a few more minor leaguers to uh, kind of fortify the uh, the minor league system. They certainly got a haul. They had seven of the top 100 players, or seven of the top rated 100 players, come into their system for uh, a roll Chapman and for Andrew Miller. That's instant minor league success right there. One ball and two strikes to Rugdad. is one for three this evening. Reached on a double and an error. Breaking ball. Not much you can do about that. Boy, as a left-hander, just walk on back to the dugout. Well, look at Miller's num overall numbers, 93 strikeouts in 56 innings. Ball feels like it's starting out in back of you. <laughs> Here's Carlos Gomez. Notice Miller 
Miller threw Odor almost all breaking balls. He remembers that fastball he threw to him at Yankee Stadium. That's right. Got a little bit of Randy Johnson in him. The follow through anyway. Yeah, that one hadn't come down yet, I don't think. What was that, about 2.30 in the morning when that when he left the ballpark? <laughs> Went a long way, I know that. And Carlos gone on strikes as Miller. Three pitches gets his second straight strikeout. Two gone, and Mitch Moreland now will come out. Now before Mitch steps in, let's send it over to Dana Larson for the Chevy game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Well, good news from the south side of Chicago. Rangers can complete the uh, win over the Indians tonight. Rangers will get back to seven and a half games up on the Seattle Mariners. Mitch takes that pitch in at the knees. It is 0 and 2. And as we stand right now, Astros and Mariners are deadlocked. Seven games behind the Rangers. And Mitch gone on strikes. 12 pitches, three strikeouts for Andrew Miller in a 1 2 3 frame. On to the eighth we go. Rangers 7, Indians nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. It's a happening place here in this up, upper home run porch. Tom, they really bring their gloves big time up here. We also have the MLB impersonators right here. But the progressive fan has to go to Nancy Hughes from Graham, Texas. Never misses a game, guys. Celebrating her 80th birthday here tonight with 44 of her closest friends. Congratulations, Nancy. There's the bag. Anything you'd like to say? Yeah, go Rangers. We, we go. love it. Great to have you out here. Appreciate it. They tell me, Buzz, she's raised 11. 11 kids, right? 11 kids. Wow. She did. She raised 11. There we go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Noxie. That's great. Thank Happy you. birthday. Now we go to the eighth inning. And out of the Ranger bullpen comes Jake Deakman to take over. Deakman will face Kiptis, Lindor, and Napoli. First pitch is a bit low. Deakman in his 54th game of the year. Worked 45 and a third innings coming into play tonight. A 278 ERA, but the league getting just 160 against him. That'll go up just a, a tick as Kiptis able to get that base hit to right field. Got jammed, but got him in a good spot. A little leadoff single here in the eighth inning, and now Francisco Indoor. Mentioned last night that uh, Kipnis had splits 
that favored him hitting against left-handed pitching at higher averages against left-handers. He got a base hit there off a pretty tough left-hander. And the splits for Jake Diekman are reverse also. Left-handers hitting better against Diekman than our right-handed hitters. Boy, when you watch him, you just, it's hard to understand why yeah. that would be the case. I'm sure if I were a left-handed batter, I could stay in there very long. I know. Lindor takes the pitch down and in. It's one ball and one strike. Lindor tonight had that first inning triple. He got stranded at third. Since then, it's lined to right and struck out. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Now 2-1. Crowd of almost 45,000 on hand here tonight. <laughs> you know, if if Yoda puts that up there, he you gotta does. go with it. Yoda's not going with a wave. No. <laughs> Don't want that to dominate my destiny. Slice fly ball down the right field line, and Mazar runs out of room. That's back in the second row and bounces around a bit. Two balls, two strikes. Chuck Morgan, the uh, director of In Park Entertainment, it looks like he has the official version of Yoda right there, giving him the advice. Matter of fact, maybe Yoda's the one putting that on the board. I would think. Well, the guy in background's watching himself eat. <laughs> <laughs> Still two and two to Francisco Lindor. Now Deakman gets the sign. Another pop foul that will reach the seats down the right side. Lindor a 308 average. As he faces Deakman here in the eighth inning. Jake coming into the ball game tonight. In his last four games has thrown four to third shutout innings. Trying to get things back on the right, the right path. Lindor lost his bat after that swing, but it's another foul ball. Jake, you'll remember, had some time on the disabled list. Had a cut on his uh, index finger. And he was pitching him. He was right around the All-Star break. Got him swinging. Came back with a breaking ball after all that. And Lindor couldn't adjust to it. One out. Well located, too, down and on the outside corner. Lindor was battling against the fastball, but couldn't make contact on the slider. Doesn't strike out a whole lot, only 72 strikeouts and almost 500 at bats. And that's the ninth strikeout by Ranger pitching tonight. Here's Napoli. One ball, no strikes. Nap tonight is fly to center. Grounded to first and struck out. Jason Kipnis at first. One ball, one strike. Ranger infield shading Napoli a couple of steps to the left. Elvis Rugnet uh, favoring the center part of the of the diamond. Fastball called strike that had Napoli backing out of the way that comeback fastball. One and two. This is the sixth game of 
the road trip that the Indians are on. They scored 12 runs yesterday. In the other five games, they scored a total of three runs. <laughs> they had Rangers shut them out the first game. They're shutting them out tonight. And in Oakland, they had one run in all of the three games. They beat the Rangers 12 to 1 last night, and they beat the A's in one game, one to nothing. Streets like that will kind of make you look at the run differential and say, so what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that pitch in the dirt, it's a full count to Napoli. Napoli in his accustomed spot at three and two. He's batting cleanup. He'll be followed by Jose Ramirez. Robinson Torinos went out to uh, take a little time. That last ball kind of took a chunk out of his arm, his right forearm. And Robinson trying to shake the effects of that pitch in the dirt off. Three and two. This crowd of 44,944. Starting to make some noise. Payoff pitch got him swinging. Second straight strikeout for Deakman. And there are two away for Jose Ramirez. Mike Napoli was kind of resigned to his fate about halfway through that swing. <laughs> Said, if I'm going to swing at that, I got no chance. Ramirez shoots that one hard but foul down the right side. Ramirez, three hits in three trips to the plate tonight. Two singles, a triple. Now hitting at 311. I keep looking at him trying to find something that he's not good at. I can't find anything. Only struck out 53 times this year, and in today's game, that's that's pretty good total. Significantly less than average for a guy playing every day. Now, before I pronounce him perfect, I'd have to see how he takes care of his room. <laughs> <laughs> to right field, and Mazzara has this one under control. Another leadoff single, no damage to Jake Deep and a couple of strikeouts and a fly to right. Bottom of the eighth inning coming up. Rangers leading the Indians 7-0 on Fox Sports Southwest. The Indians as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. This is the third of four between these two teams. The finale coming your way tomorrow here on Fox Sports Southwest. Coverage begins at 1.30 with the Rangers live pregame show. 
There you see one of the featured matchups, Derek Holland getting his second start since coming off the DL. And he will have a tough task against Carlos Santana, who hits very well against Mr. Holland. Again, first pitch, 2 o'clock. Things get going at 1.30 tomorrow here on Fox Sports Southwest. A big thank you to the fine folks at AT&T High Speed Internet for getting us ready for game four of four between these two guys. All right, Em. Well, you saw the first uh, pitch of the night for Chris Jimenez. Yeah, and that's the same one that used to uh, catch for the Rangers. He's a catcher now with the Indians. This is the second game that he has pitched in this year. Tony Francona, or Terry Francona going to him as his uh, closer in games that are not quite close. Third career pitching performance for Chris Jimenez. Elvis Andrews had a soft liner to short. Now here's Robinson Chirinos. I think that's the way to do it too as a position player. You just come in and you throw it slower than any pitcher throws it. So at least you're throwing something the hitter hasn't doesn't see in a big league game very yeah. often. So Michael Martinez the new shortstop. Chris Jimenez can't get the call on the low strike from Jeff Kellogg. That'd be funny to watch a position player argue with the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> The right field slicing toward the line. Gisenhall into the corner. And that is foul. And Torino's back to the plate, and here's Jimenez, a two and one count. Jimenez's only appearance uh, as a pitcher this year. He worked two innings, gave up uh, four hits. And four runs. And that's a little bit high. It's three and one. Pop foul behind the plate. Perez coming back, but that's back in the third row. Full count. You got three catchers in the picture. And Jimenez out there pitching. Torino's hitting and Perez catching. <laughs> that That's pretty good. And Jeff Kellogg. Jeff Kellogg was probably a catcher in college. Yeah, could have been. Now Jimenez again to the plate. Martinez out number two. High Baylor, no now let's take our AT&T high-speed internet replay trip back to the first inning. Mitch Marlin in a one-nothing Ranger lead at the time, but the bases were full and Mitch launched it. Second career home run, or grand slam, his 22nd home run of the year. Five-run first inning. The Rangers have not looked back. Mitch Moreland getting the big blast early. Omar Mazzara up there for his fifth plate appearance of the night. He is one for four to this point. Omar's base hit came in the second inning. It was a solid base hit to center field. And he pops that pitch up. This one playable for Perez. And that'll do it. So it is a 1 2 3 inning for Chris Jimenez. Sends the Rangers down in order. We will go to the ninth inning. At Globe Live Park, the Rangers leading 7 0 on Fox Sports Southwest.
Wildlife Park in Arlington. Dana Larson here reminding you we've got Rangers Eye presented by Frontier Communications coming up right after the game. A.J. Griffin rock solid. Elvis Andrews rocking Cleveland once again. Mitch Moreland with the big blast. Just a few of the things we'll be talking about in the postgame show. We'll hear from Jeff Bannister and key players in the clubhouse and set up Derek Holland going tomorrow in the finale. So we hope to see you right after the game. Join me and Mark McLemore in just a bit. Buzz and Tom, back to you guys. All right, Dana, thank you very much. Well, Matt Bush has entered the ball game now. He will work the ninth inning, and Lonnie Chisenhall, the first hitter that he faces. Ball one to Chisenhall, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Two strikeouts and a fly ball to center. Numbers for Matt Bush. 43rd appearance of the year. Matt with a 5-2 and two record. 291 ERA. The league, though, just hitting 214 against him. Soft fly ball to left center field. Gomez for out number one. Well, folks, we've seen the blue dot and the green dot. Now it's time to finish that race with the red dot bobblehead. On Saturday, September 3rd, the first 15,000 fans get their own Nitto Tire red dot bobblehead. That's when the Rangers take on the Astros. Get your tickets now at TexasRangers.com and take the red dot home with you. The one out here in the ninth, Abraham Almonte, who singled his last time up, one for three this evening. Beltre has that scoot right underneath him into left field. And I'm sure that'll be an error on the, the Ranger third sacker. That was a skimmer. And see the grimace on Adrian's face. How did I miss that? It just didn't come up like he planned nope. it. No, Beltre charged with the error. One on, one out now. Tyler Naquin. Nothing in one. Naquin is hit by a pitch in the second. Since then, has flied to left and struck out. Ball's hit well to center field. Going back is Desmond. He has room and in front of the warning track. Hauls it in. Out number two with Almonte going back to first. Yes, well, A.J. Griffin in line for uh, his sixth victory of the year. Six shutout innings tonight. Five hits, one walk, six punch outs for A.J. 95 pitches, 66 strikes in those six innings. Well, the crowd beginning to stand all around Globe Life Park. Rangers one out away from taking a 2-1 series lead. Roberto Perez, the hitter. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, rushing that ball up there at 99 miles an hour. Perez had a single in the fifth inning. Other than that, has grounded to second and struck out. One ball, one strike. Matt Bush, the San Diego native. Whirlwind trip this year to the big leagues. Started at double A. Came up to the big leagues and never has looked back. Strike two. Making some great adjustments in his game, figuring it all out at the big league level. Now the crowd is shy of 45,000, and they are standing, applauding their hometown Rangers. One-two pitch. That pitched in the last game at Cincinnati, worked an inning with a strikeout against the Reds. The 2-2 two -two on the way. draw out the suspense just a little bit longer. And that cutter he's throwing, I think it puts on about a mile an hour every three weeks. <laughs> Started out at like 90, it's up to 94 now. 
think he's getting so he doesn't want it to break too much so that it takes the speed off. Uh -huh. Another foul ball. Now Perez tuning it up a bit. Lucas Harrell standing next to A.J. Griffin. Two out, a two ball, two strike count on Roberto Perez. Rangers looking to go back to 22 games over 500 win their 76th ball game of the year. And extend their lead over the Cleveland Indians back to a couple of games. Another 2-2. Beltre handles that one. Short way for the out. And that is a winner. <laughs> he threw that thing about 90 miles an hour to Odor. Well, Matt Bush comes in, gets the final three outs. There was an error on Beltre, the only blemish on the inning. Rangers shut out the Cleveland Indians for the second time in the span of three games. And for the Rangers, their second home shutout this year, their fourth shutout overall. Adrian Beltre and company get it done tonight. Good to see A.J. Griffin tonight, Tom, uh, really working strongly and well deep into the game. Definitely. I think, Buzz, he did exactly what he needed to do tonight. He utilized his fastball. I think it was his best fastball that he's had all year, velocity-wise and command-wise. He also threw probably the best changeup that he's had this year. He threw at least 10 or 15 really good changeups. Always has a pretty good slow curveball. And the bottom line is he went six shutout innings and did a very nice job. Only one walk and six strikeouts. He got the win tonight. Goes to six and three, and he's going to go home tonight feeling good about that contribution. And the Rangers up their lead once again in the AL West. They are now seven and a half games ahead of both the Mariners and the Astros, who are tied for second. Well, let's go down to the field. Emily Jones has A.J. Griffin. Thank you very much, A.J. Griffin. Six shutout. How good did you feel out there today? I mean, that was awesome. Uh, you always try to go out there and, and do that, throw up zeros for your team. And, uh, you know, today I got through six, and uh, it's a pretty good feeling. You talked yesterday about the fact that you were feeling good and you felt like you had a good game plan going in. How easy was it to kind of implement that today? I mean, they're a tough team. Uh, they got good hitters, but uh, we were able to keep them off balance pretty well. And, Mix the uh, fastball around in the zone, up and down, and uh, just keep everyone off balance and, uh, and just pitch our game. Okay, let's let Elvis take care of business here. Then I got one more question for you. I don't think anyone enjoys the Powerade bath quite like you. You really do enjoy it. Don't yeah, you? I mean, uh, you know, you got to go out there and earn it, and uh, on the days you do, you got to enjoy it. Absolutely. So. Okay, one more question. Uh, the guys in the booth were talking tonight about maybe the best fastball you've had and the best change you've had all mm -hmm. season. Did you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I was staying through my fastball really well tonight, and uh, the changeup, I was getting good extension on it. So uh, we're keeping it down in the zone, getting people to swing over it more, and uh, yeah, it was a good combination right there. Nice, AJ. Way to go. Up top. Guys? Apparently, you know what you're talking about, AJ. <laughs> well, thank you, Em. I appreciate that. Uh, good job by AJ. We'll be back to Gold Park with more after AJ gets his bat. Rangers win it 7 0.